How's it going guys? We're gonna pick back up on that react just me today If you're interested in following along the treehouse link is in the description You get seven days for free and it helps support the cha channel So you, you lose nothing, but you help me out. So it'd be awesome if you want to check that out and follow along uh, We're just barely past just Barely past like the first part. So be cool. I'll just wait here Let a few people get here. Don't want to Get too out of context. Hope you guys are having it. Oof. Oof. What's up, Captain? How's it going, man? How you doing, fam? Twenty-one here. That was fast. Uh, my live viewers haven't updated yet, so good to see you guys here. I'm just hanging out for a minute while I get everything set up a little bit more. The, uh... Austin, what's up? Calvin saying, hey, how's it going, man? How are you guys today? It's about lunchtime for me. I'm just gonna stream, react a little bit, and go to the gym. Come back, work on my site, teach a little bit of code. It's gonna be good. We have a job here in two hours. All right, this is this is this is the job hack right here. You gotta get the business card, but you gotta find out who's above that guy. Is that treehouse? The, the, the thumbnail. <laughs> Yeah, it's Treehouse. 100%. You should you should follow along. New one. Hey, man. How's it going? Danielle. I said Danielle, but it's Daniel. I'm, I'm, my bad. I'm sorry. Let me paste this in the Discord real quick. We'll get started. Um, Pablo's last. Confirmed last. Let me know if the music's too loud, by the way. Um, yeah. You hate programming in C? I don't think anyone said the opposite of that before. I love programming. I don't think that's, I don't think that exists. Let's pick up, pick back up where we were. I have to find where we were. Alright, well, maybe I'll just type in the next. I think we're doing React Basic, yeah, so 104 minutes left. We'll go ahead and resume this. Tell me if the music is too loud, and I'll pause it. Oh, I skipped this one. That's right. What tool do we use to translate? It's called Babel. You're doing a great job. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. What'd you guys think of the last video I posted? I had to wait, I had to put a little gap between the two because I don't want to drive too much traffic away from that video to this stream, but... Is JSX with React optional? Yes, it is. Which of the following snippets applies a class of container to the div? What? Oh, it'd be this one, right? Class name, because class is a reserved keyword in JSX. Watching React stream and live lecture at Ajax at the same time. Nice, dude. Uh, can you play the music and monetize? Uh, I'm using Epidemic Sound here. So this is where I pay $15 a month to get this sound, uh, all their songs. That's what you hear at the end of my videos. So right now we're doing this playlist. And so since I pay for it, turn the volume down a little bit. It's all the way down. Let me try my headphones. Maybe that, I don't know. Let's see. Elements written in JSX get transpiled to this. Please fill in the correct answer in each blank provided below. Display the value of pet name variable inside of p tags. All right, so that's easy. You just use these braces. Dude, I'm good. I'm good, man. Six out of six, what is the purpose? We just did this. Same question, so they're used to evaluate JavaScript expressions. I mean, I, I suppose that's what that's called, right? That must be the right one. Dude, I am good. 67 people here to watch me do React. We're just doing the very, very, very basic, so if you're, you know, you can still follow along. I'm not that far ahead. And even if I was, you can still follow along. All right, let me pause this one. We'll pick back up here. 
Sell out. Confirmed. Hi there. In the previous stage, you learned how to create React elements, the smallest building blocks of React applications. This stage is all about thinking in and understanding components, which are at the heart of React. Everything in React is considered to be a component. So what exactly is a component? Aaron, a component I mean? is a piece of UI that you can reuse. Just like you're able to reuse code in JavaScript with functions, a component lets you reuse code that renders a part of your UI. Being able to split your UI code into independent reusable pieces and think about each piece in isolation is one of the most embraced features of React. So first, let's have a look at what we're going to build. In this course, we're going to begin building a scoreboard application. A scoreboard will be a simple app you can use when playing board games or card games, for instance. Our it will allow you to add and remove players from the game and keep each player's score by increasing and decreasing a score counter for the player. It's going to include dynamic information, like the total number of players and points, and even contain a stopwatch that can keep track of turn time. To make things interesting it's and competitive, right. the score leader state, will have right? a crown icon next to their name, and will add some game mechanics that will let another player steal the crown from the leader. In this course, we're only going to build certain parts of the scoreboard, like the player display, score counter, and total player stat. We'll also be able to remove players from the board. But in a follow-up course, you'll level up your React skills by building all the remaining features of, of the skills, scoreboard guys. app. The first step we'll take in building our scoreboard app is to think about the application in small, simple components. In the browser, I'm going to use my Chrome DevTools inspector to highlight the main sections of the app. I'm going to speed first, this up a little bit. First, the header contains the title and stats, like the total number of minimum, players on the board. Below the header is a list of players. And next to each player is a counter that lets you increase and decrease the player's I mean, score. This is the most Finally, we have the jobs container right now. that wraps might the entire well app. I mean, I'm not doing so to start, our anymore. app might consist of three components. A header component, Much a so player good. component wow. you can reuse to display Great each moves, player and score, keep it up. and the container component that brings everything together. As you build React projects, you'll find that breaking your app into smaller components this way provides many benefits. You can take pieces of repeated code, like the players and counters, and turn them into a reusable component. It's also easier to work with several small components rather than a single large one. I really like this. I like the way React doesn't use a special templating language like other front-end frameworks and libraries do. React components are written in plain JavaScript with the help of JSX, and they contain the logic required to display a small part of your UI. Creating a React component is a two-step process. First, you define the component as either a JavaScript function or class, then you use and display the component with a JSX tag. We're going to build the main pieces of the scoreboard app first, like the header, player, and counter. So let's begin by defining the header component. The easiest way to define a component is to write a JavaScript function. In app.js, I'll replace all my constant variables with a function hold on, hold on, named hold on. header. Pull this back up. Notice the capital H. Hold, please. Um, this is what I made last time. Is this? Let me let me zoom this in a little bit for you guys. Let me know if that's big enough. All right. Go. Thanks YouTube, but you are you are already watching it. Um, if you're on a Windows machine, that's probably why. Sometimes the notifications on Windows are super delayed. So let's. All we want is this, right? So let's just go ahead and get the function. What? Why did it uppercase that f? And the function name. React components are required to begin with an uppercase letter. You'll learn exactly why in the next video when we use and display this component, but it also helps to know that the function is defining a component when you see it. So header is going to return React elements, describing what should appear on the screen using JSX. To write my JSX across multiple lines, I'll add a space and a set of parentheses after the return keyword. And you can read more about why we add the space and parentheses in the teacher's notes. Next, we'll return a header element. I'll use JSX to add a set of opening and closing header tags. Inside the header, let's add an H1 for the title and below the h1 add a span to display the scoreboard stats. We're going to display the text for the title and stats dynamically in a later video. For now, let's include static placeholder text. Inside the h1, I'll write scoreboard, and inside the span, the, let's add players, uh, colon, and one player elements. for now. Like now let's give the span a class like of stats so that it can be styled with CSS. Again, in React, we use class name as the attribute instead of class. All right, our it's header component to, is all set. In the next video, speed. we'll render it to the page using a JSX yeah. tag. Wait. Okay, that was fast. Wait, what, what did he name it? What did he name it? I missed it. Dang it. Wanna watch this later, see if you can build. We'll send it complete. 
And Ozark is calling your name. Yeah, I got you. Was it players, I think? What do you call it? I have to replay. Real quick. React doesn't use a special all set. In the next video. Stats, okay, not even close. All right, so you can't use you can't use this like so this is like JSX right so this, you you can't type class because this is a JavaScript file it will error out if you type that so we're so spoiled by autocomplete yeah I know right like I'm over here trying to like I'm like oh, I can keep up with 1.5 percent speed apparently I can't I think that's it right okay next next section I'm gonna start working with React JSX lets you awesome, define man. your own tags. A JSX tag can not only represent an HTML Search element like H1 span and it header, is. it can also represent a user-defined component. In other words, by creating a component called header, we can use a header tag wherever we want to display the header. Let me show oh, you yeah. by rendering the header component to the page with a JSX tag. In React on that render, I'll replace the header variable with a self-closing header tag. What up? The tag name needs to exactly match the name of the function. I'll give oh, app.js a save. Right. And over in the browser, we see the full header component rendered to the screen, and you can see its elements in the element inspector. There's a um, few important details you should know about JSX tags that refer to React components. First is that the capital letter in the tag name is necessary to differentiate custom components from native DOM elements. In JSX, lowercase tag names like h1, span, and header are considered to token. be HTML tags. So when you see a capitalized unexpected JSX tag, oh. it means that the tag is referring to a React component. I done goofed. Hold. Was it? You're writing in the state of React and you have a render. What? I'm literally just copying what this guy's doing. Oh. That was the problem. Go. Looking good. Second is that you can use the self-closing form of the tag if the component has no children. For example, it's acceptable to refer to the header component using opening and closing header tags like this. The reason you'd write them this way is to provide more JSX tags as the children. This is going to be useful for displaying nested components, which you'll learn about soon. Now, our header is a self-contained header element, so we'll refer to it using a self-closing tag. And although not required, it's recommended that you include a single space in your self-closing JSX tag. Finally, a component's JSX wow. tag well, is also a function call to react.createElement under the hood. Let's quickly go back to Babel's online compiler to see what's really happening when we write out our component using a JSX tag. So as you can see here in the compiled JavaScript, React DOM dot render is being passed the React dot create element method, which is supplied the header function as the element type. And that function returns a header React element along with its children. So in React, your entire UI is a composition of functions. Neato. Hey, we get a quiz. You guys ready for this quiz? It's always the commas, right? That's because it's an object and I goofed here, right? React DOM dot render gives an object. So you have to space those things out with commas. A blank renders a reusable piece, a component job. How do you create a React component? As either a JavaScript function or a class? What? It's a function, right? Well, I guess you could do it this way. Yeah. Fill in the blanks to find a component that creates a reusable footer. Oh, all right. So this is needs to be, right? Is that it? What is it? Okay. Render a component named scoreboard into the DOM. Okay. React uses a templating language for creating components. What? I didn't mean to click that right click. Dang it. Okay. Better luck next time. We got to try it again. All right. Let's try it again. Right, so I typed footer. No, you don't have to do. You don't have to do ES6. I'm not even. I'm not even sure if ES6 is uh, supported in this. Like, if I were to do, if I were to do this, like that wouldn't. I think. I think I'm thinking too too complicated here. So function footer equals. Oh, is that what I forgot? Really, 
But then I'd have to come down here and change the F to be capitalized, right? Okay. What? <laughs> How's this not correct? What is what is going on? Function footer equals this, and then you got your comma and your closing comma. You got returns with your stuff inside of it. I'm not sure. Am I just bad? Yeah, the lowercase footer is JSX, but if you're making a reusable component, the function name has to be uppercase. Just that's literally what he said. So. Um, right, you're defining component, uppercase letter, return footer footer, right, and then if I wanted to use it, I would do, it would be like this, right? Oh, it's because of that equal sign. Okay, all right. I, I done goofed. Scoreboard. Recommended that you add a space. Got you, fam. Next question. Done. Keep up the momentum. Thanks, Treehouse. You'll often see components defined as arrow functions. For example, I'll convert the header function declaration to an arrow function expression. If you're writing a simple oh, so function your, that just returns JSX, function. like this one, you can use an implicit return. You omit the curly braces and the return keyword and leave the opening and closing parentheses to wrap your JSX. Please hold while I correct this. The implicit return. Got it. Fancy. As you learned earlier, including parentheses around JSX is optional, so you may see components simplified even further without the parentheses. There's no real benefit to writing components as arrow functions. It just provides a more concise syntax. You can use either approach. No I'm going benefit. to stick with the arrow function syntax with the curly braces and return keyword. Keep up the momentum. Thanks, man. Here we go. Now let's create the player component of the scoreboard app. This component will display a player's name and a counter that displays the player's score with buttons that let you change the score. In app.js, I'll start by creating a new function named player. Inside the function, add the return keyword followed by a set of parentheses to hold the JSX. A player will be a div with a class name of player. You just said we don't have to put the thing. What? Inside that. We'll add a span oh, with the class. I'm gonna do it this way. Player like dash name. And remember, these class names are purely for presentational oh, no reasons. No I've already written please, classes please. in the CSS to style. Please hold. Please hold while I catch up. Hey, there's a little bit of autocomplete. I'll take it. Hit up some of that span action. I feel like I can't type sometimes as a developer. You guys ever feel that way? <laughs> I'm like, why is this so difficult for me? I'm like, slash span, and it's just like not even close. You forgot const, ah, I suppose. And now we have that closing div. Think the syntax highlighting this is so weird. All right. Theoretically, if I put if I put a player in there, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna forget this time. Right? Fresh. And I messed up. What did I mess up? All the time. Story of my life. Yep. <laughs> Unexpected token, 116 function. That's what he just did. Isn't this what he just did? <laughs> I 
<laughs> Why did he type const and this is a function then? I don't get it. Ever heard of racket? No. Yep, that would do it. I used to get all like, there we go. Some CSS broke, it looked like something broke. It rendered for a brief moment in time. Berto, what's up, man? Do you chaps realize this is tricking you? Maybe. Change function to const, yeah. Const because arrow function. Got it, fam. I goofed. Thanks, guys. You guys got my back. Like, wouldn't this would be awesome. Can I just, like, get a new job doing React, but, like, stream while I work, and then I can just get all the answers from the stream, and then the stream just does my work for me, and then I pull the Tim Ferriss, where I slowly disappear from the stream, and then... I give someone team viewer and then it's like chat plays my job like twitch plays dark souls <laughs> okay well come on now footer's not defined ah that would make sense right because that was header and I changed it learning MongoDB from Colt nice dude you should try out Redis maybe okay look 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 here target container is not a Dom element what did it just like It is. You don't have to return if you write it like this is what I get for trying the new special ten syntax. You don't have to return if you do it like this. But I, I could change it back, right? I just did I did I make that mess it up even more? Oh. I don't know why it keeps auto capitalizing, yeah. So, all right, I'm going back. I'm going back to constants. So now I'm just messing with syntax, different working syntax for no reason. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I went down that rabbit hole. I'm just going to keep it. I'm just going to keep it how it is. Put this back to header. Call it a day. Yeah. 
you need to import React. Uh, I'm doing it inside of this Treehouse workspace, so everything's already in here for me. I just have to see. All right, target container is not a DOM element. Maybe we're, maybe we should just keep watching. At least elements. Changing something. Inside player name, I'll add a placeholder name for now, but this will be dynamic text later. Below the span element, I'll add the counter by first creating a div with a class name of counter. The counter has a decrement button, a score display, and an increment button. We'll create the buttons with button tags. Let's add a minus symbol for the decrement button and a plus symbol for the increment button. Next, I'll style the decrement button with two classes, counter-action and decrement. I'll make the increment button the same, replacing decrement with increment. To display the score, I'll add a span between the buttons with the class name counter-score. I'll give it a placeholder score for now, but we'll also make the score dynamic in a later video. Let's say 35. All right, now let's pass the player component. That's a minus and a plus, okay, got it. Let's tag. I think we should all just get down on our knees while Richard Dunhill the third slowly unzips. Then we can just um, continue using React. But I respect your opinion. Well, your right to opinion, I guess. But I'm over here trying to make paper with a job. Well, you guys are. I don't have my own job. Counter score equals 35. What? Okay. What else we got here? All right, that's it. Counter action decrement, counter action. Okay. Isn't the, isn't the player cons missing the return in your code? If you write it like this, this is this is, doesn't require a return statement, only if you use the function. But since we're using like this kind of function, you don't have to put it. Uh, what was it counter action? What decrement? To react on dot render to see it on the page. I'll replace the header tag with a player tag. Over in the browser, refresh, and there we have our player component. Now the buttons. Hey yo, all right, we got. All right, okay, yeah, sure, perfect, perfectly works. I love it, awesome. Okay, so we did it. Do not work yet, but we're going to create that feature in the next stage where you'll yeah, learn. It would be so nice if you were like actually coding stuff and you just had your, your stylers just pre-made for you. About component state and making- Is the speed fast enough? We gotta go fast, okay? Your UI interactive. Now that you've learned how to define a component and use it with JTEX, I have a challenge for you. This. Earlier I mentioned that components should be as small as possible and not have too many responsibilities. That way it's easier to understand their behavior. With that in mind, we could break our player component up even further by extracting the counter code from the player component. And uh, why is there a return in the tutorial? He doesn't need it there, yeah. Into its own yeah. component. So why don't you try creating a component named counter on your own? I'll show you. See how he's using this uh, little bracket here and bracket here, right? If he removes those and makes those parentheses, then you don't need a return. I'll you my solution in the next video. Okay, I unpaused for 0.2 seconds of the video. 
how'd it go? In the previous video, I challenged you to create a counter component using the counter code inside the player component. Now I'll show you my solution. I'll start by creating a new function named counter. Inside the function, I'll add the return keyword followed by a set of parentheses to hold my JSX. Then I'll cut the div with class name counter out of the player component and paste it inside the parentheses of the new counter function. Now that the counter component is complete, we need a way to display it inside. The All right, so now we are taking we're, we're we're building actual components now. All right, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this uh, right here, my counter. I'm gonna paste it in there. Put that there. And then do we? What does he want? Just to put this on the something here. Do they sponsor me? No. I have received no money for streaming this. However, if you use the little link in the description, which is my link, then uh, yeah, it supports the channel. But they, they don't pay me to do this. I'm just doing this because it's good to refresh. If you probably, if you found my video for me bombing the React lifecycle, we all, we all could agree that I could use a little bit of a refresher. <laughs> Player component. React components can make use of or refer to other React yeah, components. For example, you can render the counter component within the player component by just using the counter tag inside. Does anyone else care for the sandbox environment or just building it? So I like building it from scratch. Um, I'm just on Windows and I don't feel like dealing with yarn start and all the errors that can come with this because I don't know. I, I, I need to spend like an hour before I set up a project and do it from scratch, which would be actually really nice. We could go over some Visual Studio Code extensions. Maybe tomorrow, when I when I stream some more, we can. I'll, I'll set it up locally, and then I can run it every time. It just takes a little bit more effort to get set up. But if you just want to learn this, like just the syntax of it, this this is fine for me. The player's return statement. Oh, so we're not putting it there. We're putting it here. So we're nesting some things. It's getting weird. When a component contains another component like this, it's called composition. Composing components is a core principle in React. You'll usually have parent components like player with one or many child components. This gives the parent component the ability to control how its child components are rendered. You'll learn a whole lot more about that in the next stage. Typically, React applications have a single top-level component that wraps the entire application and composes all the main components together. So I'll create a new function component named app This component will return a div with the class scoreboard. Inside the div, we'll render our header component. Oh, hold on, it's gonna take me a second. Look, I'm just done typing that out. Now we're using our brains, boys and girls. Probably the one girl. using a self-closing header tag. To display the list of players, I'll first add a JSX comment to indicate the start of our players list. Then I'll render one player component for now using the player tag. Uh, React DOM.render usually renders your top level element into the DOM. Makibans. So let's pass. VS Code extensions. I was gonna make like a little PDF and like mail that out as like for all the people that are signed up for the newsletter. That'd be cool. our app component to react on dot render using its JSX tag. I'll save app.js. Once I refresh the browser, we see that our entire application is now mounted into the DOM. Oh snap. Oh snap. There are no hard ask our app component Make sure it didn't... to react on dot render using its JSX tag. Oh, so now we're just attaching everything inside on, the, on app. It's okay. Oh, so like a, like a classic, 
Create React app. All right, I get where we're going with this. I got it. So now everything's nested inside of everything. This is this is what can be kind of confusing about React is you have nested nested stuff. You're like, oh, what's this counter? Okay, let me come down here and see what counter is. Okay, counter is this all this stuff, and then you're like, okay, well, what's an app here? And then you're like, oh, there's a header. What's that? Let me go see what that is. We got a player. Okay, there's a player, but it has a counter. What's the counter? Like you see how you like yeah, jump around a little bit to figure out what's going. It can it can be a little bit confusing. Get on that React hot loader. Um, yeah, hot reloader would be good. I'll save app.js once I have no hard and fast rules about how to divide your components in a React application. Much so let me make sure it works. <laughs> can you learn a framework before learning a language? I would say with React, you could probably get pretty close. You can definitely get pretty close. Um, yeah, let's refresh. Wait. Save. Refresh. And what did I break? Expected a closing tag. Okay. This is, yeah, so Visual Visual Studio Code. This is this is where Visual Studio Code would be awesome to have right now because it would highlight, you know, it'd give me an error of what's wrong. Um, but instead I don't I don't have that. There we go. Got it. What is this comma? Is that after my plus button? Ah. Well, no, that's actually how it goes. Where's that comma coming from? So what is this right below? You must know a language before learning a friend. I don't know if you must. I don't think it's a must. You probably should, but you don't, you don't have to. All right, I don't see it. I don't know what I, what's going on here. Debugging an app without knowing the language is going to be a huge pain because you're not gonna know how everything compiles down All right, let's refresh one more time. Bruh, where is this coming from? Learn the framework, but learn the language, right? You you need both. If you go and you learn the framework and you get a you, you, you make a whole bunch of progress, then you have a bug. And you have a bug that's like originating out of some vanilla JavaScript, right? If you don't understand vanilla JavaScript, yeah, that's it, you're done. Nothing. Oh my god, I can't handle this. Yeah, language is most important. <laughs> it's good for Python, but not JS. I have no idea. Whatever. We, we finished it like writing any other code, how and when to break it down can be a matter of personal or team preference. Having a few large and unwieldy components has its pros and cons. Having too many tiny components also has its pros and cons. So the key is to strike a balance. Remember, you can restructure your code as you go if you feel like it's not divided well. With React, we never touch the actual DOM directly. React. You don't need a comma after root. Is that what I did? Nope. I think maybe it's just cached. Uh, maybe this. It's that. it's that thing. It manages what gets rendered into the DOM and what should appear on the screen. So it can be tricky to debug your UI in the browser. For instance, how do you map the React components you're building to what you see in the developer tools inspector? Fortunately, the engineers at Facebook created the React Developer Tools extension to give you a big productivity boost when working with React. Let's take a look. React DevTools is an extension it, that lets you inspect your Just React component hierarchy in the Chrome yes. Firefox Developer One yes, change your life. First thing we'll do is download matter. and install the tools. I'll open no, a new tab no, no, no. and just Not good luck React to me, man. Good luck to DevTools. you. 
I'm using Chrome, so I'll click the link to the Chrome web store. React DevTools is also available for Firefox and as a standalone app for Safari. Um, you can find the links for those in the teacher's notes with this right? video. Next, click the green Add to Chrome button to install the tools. I've already installed them, so now that they're installed, anytime I visit a website or app that's built using React, I'll see the React extension icon light up in my toolbar. For example, if I switch over to the scoreboard app, a tooltip pops up, letting me know that this page is using the development build of React. And if we have a look at the React site, framework. it notifies us that this page is using the production build. Wait, what? I think I already have that. What am I doing? What is this video? Oh, dev DevTools. React. So now if you open your browser's developer tools, you should see a new tab called React. New phone. Click on the tab and you will see the full component tree that makes up. I think I have that already. I do, what up? Full component tree, please keep talking. Our app, this is the React code that underlies our UI. You can inspect your component hierarchy similar to how you inspect HTML elements in the elements pane. So the first thing we see is our app component click the arrow to expand the component. We see the scoreboard div and the child header and player components. Expand the player component and we see its elements in child component, the counter. The tool offers handy shortcuts to help you be productive and quickly debug your apps. For example, you can use the arrow keys to navigate up and down your component tree. You can right click any component, select the resume find review. DOM node, and oh, it will switch that, over to the elements 35. pane and show you the corresponding DOM node. But we do. Another useful tip want, is that if you inspect a React letter, element on the page using the it's all, regular it's all elements included tab, in there. then switch over to the React tab. That element will be automatically highlighted in the React component tree. Finally, one feature I like to use is the search bar to find components by name. For example, if I type player into the search bar, it will show me all the player components type counter, and I immediately see the counter component. And there's a whole lot more you can do with React DevTools, including inspecting a component's properties and the state of your application or oh, its data over here in the right That's pane. Ego. And you're gonna learn a whole lot more about properties and state starting in the next video. We're properties going to be using React DevTools as we go to, to understand more about how React works React. and how our application is running. Take so I suggest this. you install them now. Whenever I visit sites built with React, I like to inspect them with React DevTools to see how they were built. So I encourage you to do the same. You'll often learn something new or pick up new tips along the way. Now we have the basic shape of our application However, it's static. The guys so in the next like stage, you'll learn how to insert dynamic information into your components with properties or like. props. See you soon. That's crazy. Look at that. If only my cryptocurrency was like this graph. <laughs> it is like the inverse. Hey, what's up, Patrick? We should we should pair code this since you're a React expert now. You've done all of React. You've done Redux. You got your state management. React like uh. Patrick should be doing this. When a component contains other components, it's called mounting. <laughs> uh, complete the code below. Are you guys enjoying the stream, by the way? Like, is this exciting stuff? Am I explaining, you know? It's not worth the time to learn the basics. Uh, I think it's worth the time to learn the basics. Like, for example, if you don't know how a dot map function works or a dot reduce function works or a dot filter function works with JavaScript, that's just straight functional JavaScript methods, you're going to have a hard time understanding how you map out data from your state. Like that's not going to, that's, that might not click, right? You, you can write a basic for loop, but people are going to be using dot map generally. Um, you should, you should learn enough to get started and then learn more as you need it. Right. But I, I wouldn't recommend spend 10,000 hours on JavaScript, then go learn react. Right. If it depends on what your, what's your budget? Like what's your, when I say budget, I'm referring to like your time. Like, do you have a lot? Do you have a lot of time to to do it? Like, you know. But generally, you're gonna you're gonna end up with a bug somewhere, and it's gonna be because you don't know the basics. That's that's just the downfall, right? But there's kind of a meme right now where people are saying you can learn React without knowing JavaScript because it's almost like literally like. You can memorize how to do this. You can memorize how to write this. And then anyone can learn HTML in like a day. So this, like you can, you know, see how easy it is to get started going, start, start going fast, but then you need to start like doing loops and how to access objects, how to change different keys and values in objects. Stuff like that comes from vanilla JavaScript. And you'll need to do that when you want to make a really custom React, you know, not enjoying the stream. I'm glad that you're enjoying the stream. Complete the code below to create a navigation component as a function. What? Oh, you just want me to return? Okay. When should you break a component? 
You should strike a balance. What? <laughs> um, what component? Oh, the top level. What is the capital letter necessary in component name? Uh, oh, it's so that you can use them down there in the render. I think it's B. Oh, let's see. Dang it, now we gotta do it again. Your issue is coming up with small projects. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, man. No one's expecting you to reinvent the wheel. Just make projects that have already been made, but put your own spin on it. Most concepts you use at work are not, like, they're all reused. All the concepts you learn here, you can use at work. The only difference between this and work is that your work repo is private and you probably have a first to market advantage. Uh, but same concepts. CFA. <laughs> oh, I had a return here. I just realized you guys can only see the top of my head. Fantastic. Brad Traversy? Yeah, it's pretty good. I like Brad. I'd like to talk to Brad. He's a busy dude. All right, you guys can answer this one. Why is a capital letter necessary in the component name? I think it's B then, right? Got it. You just learned thinking and components badge. Heck yeah. At its simplest, React is a library for creating and updating HTML elements. Our application so far is not that useful. It consists of a static user interface. How would we customize the scoreboard, like add new players and modify scores? In React, we use properties or props to customize our components and pass dynamic information into them. HTML elements accept attributes that give them further meaning and additional behavior. Attributes provide extra bits of information to the browser, like an element's ID, class name, or an image's alt text, for example. Every React component and element can receive a list of attributes, just like HTML elements. In React, this list is called properties or props. Props are a core concept in React because it's how we get data into a component. Most of the components in your UI will be configured with props. For example, you'll add functionality to a component, have it behave a certain way, and display its contents with props. There are two main steps to using props in a component. First, you write props in a component's JSX tag using an attribute syntax. Then the component needs to be able to take in that information and use it in some way. If you remember earlier, when we viewed the object representation of a DOM node in the console, it had a built-in property named props, and its value was an object containing the attributes passed to it and its children. Every React element and component has a props object containing the list of props given to it. We can inspect the props of a element and a component in React DevTools. So if you open up React DevTools and select the scoreboard container div. Please hold, following along. Someone had too much coffee that day? Oh, yeah, he's not talking that fast. It's actually at 1.5x, don't worry. Over in the right pane, you'll see the text props. The children prop shows that it's an array holding two objects. And the class name prop is the class given to the div, scoreboard. Inspect the header component. And in the right pane, you'll see that props is an empty object. And that's right, because our header component currently has no props. Let's start by displaying the content of our header component props dynamically so using props. Confusing. In the header, we need to display two pieces of content, the title and the total player count. You pass props to a component via the component JSX tag at the place where it's used. The header tag is used in the app component. So let's first add an attribute named title and set it to the string scoreboard. Uh, header, yep, got it. Oh, we wanna, what is this, app? Oh, yep, okay. So what are we just gonna take this off? Here. Oh no, that's how we're gonna access. Okay. You can. 
Give a prop any name you want. Title is just a name that I made up, but this could be named heading, banner, title, mid title face, anything. Next, let's add a new prop named total players. And it's good practice to use camel case for prop names consisting of two or more words to make them more readable. Now the value for total players should be a number. Anytime you pass a prop a value other than a string, like a number or a variable, you should place it between curly braces so that it gets evaluated as a JSX expression. I'll pass total players a value one, but you can pass it any number you'd like. As you can see, props look like custom HTML attributes that provide information to the tag. If you open React DevTools and oh. select the header component, Hey, it didn't break. I'm so paranoid. Select that header component. Look at those props, baby. All right, continuing. Dude, you just read, you just read unscripted. Yeah, I mean, it resonates with some people more than others, Austin, but that book made me, uh, you know, wanna walk out of my cubicle many times. Like, it took me like three days to read it, but you should see the title in total players props will be passed to the header tag here under props. So these two props are now available to be used in the header component. Next, we'll update our header function to use these props. When you define a component using a function, the function gets one default argument from React, a props object containing a list of props given to the component. So let's enable the use of props in our header component by giving our function a parameter called props. You can name this parameter anything you want, but props is the name most commonly used, so I recommend naming it props as well. Oh, hold on. Pausing. Let's come up here, get some props. If I log props to the console, you'll see that props is an object with a key of title, which has the value scoreboard, and a key of total players, which has the value one. So now we want to place the values of these props so into now, our- now what we got to do in here, right? We got to do dot what is it, title thing, right? Something like that, probably. Our JSX Let's see. inside the H1 and span, replacing the static text. We'll need to access the title and total players properties of the props object. And you can do this with dot notation, just as you'd access the property of any object literal in JavaScript. For example, props.title in props.totalplayers. But you can't simply write props.title between the H1 tags. As you can see, our page will literally display props.title. We well, learned that JSX accepts JavaScript expressions. So we'll instead display the content using a JSX expression. Again, a JSX expression is surrounded by curly braces. So between the H1 tags, oh, right. write props.title in cycle. Got it. Forgot. Does that mean I could use these props in any other component? I'm assuming so. Come on. curly braces. And let's replace just the number in the span after players with curly braces. And inside the curly braces, we'll write, oh, whoops. Props dot total players. I'll give app.js a save. And over in the browser, we see that it works. We see scoreboard and players colon one. And you can change the value of the title and total players props here in the header tag. Oh, this is so confusing. I always have to like scroll up and down for a second to remember. So we're using this header, right? Which is uh, this thing here. And we're assigning the props here, but we're actually using them inside of the, inside of the header component here. I don't know why, I mean, I guess I get why you do that, but if you guys ask Chris Sean, Chris Sean has a job doing view. Uh, he works at Entrepreneur Magazine. So I know he gets paid over six figures doing view there. 
but it's pretty similar to React. For example, my scoreboard and 11 total players. And we can see I'll that. Let me make sure this works. What did I do? What did I do? Adjacent elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Didn't I do that? What did he have that I don't have? That the component updates the content. Simple props out to. Oh, he's got it in the header. Okay. All right. All right. Hold. I got it. I removed it. Yeah, I missed the header. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate you. Here we go. Yeah, passing props around the same file is super confusing. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> why would you pass props from up here or from, from down here where it's rendering back up here to a component in the same file? Like, you pass to another file, right? But Total player. this is React one. Basics, so... And we get you gotta learn how to use them. We could write literal values like strings or numbers and concatenate strings, even call a function. For instance, in the header tag, I'll pass the total player's prop an arrow function that takes a number and adds 10 to it. Oh, I can write functions in there. Neither. Now I can call this function inside the header component with props.totalPlayers, pass five as the argument. And as you can see, it displays the value 15. Wait. I'll put five in there. All right, I'll try that bad boy out. Ooh, let's do that. Hold. Props total players. Okay. That's fine. Oh. Here, players. Make that into a function. Come down here. What did he do? Plus 10. Okay, it ran as a function. Player, not a number. Okay. There we go. Don't tell me how to live my life. That's funny. You guys can feel free to drop some video ideas, by the way. We've been here about an hour. Now I can call this function inside the header component with props.totalPlayers, pass five as the argument, and as you can see, it displays the value, 50, an expression, or something that returns a value. I'll set total players back to one for now. In the next step, you'll learn. Okay, in the next step. And the next step is going to be tomorrow. Because we've been here for an hour, and I think that's a pretty long stream. So, for, for code at least, right? I don't find people following along a code stream for an hour. So, in fat arrow, right, we'll just do one. Done. So cringe looking at back at the learning room. More tips stuff. and best. Dude, do you remember when you didn't know how to write? when you didn't even know how to like write basic HTML. Remember remember learning semantic HTML? Yeah, you, you learn a lot in the very, very, very basics of React, but like in practice, you never do a lot of the things that you learn in the basics. But I guess it's, if you stop and study like these fundamentals. Practices for using props. Look at that. Thanks for the momentum. Is there a quiz up? I think that we got a little quiz here. Oh, pro tips. What? Oh, separate lines. Oh, gotcha. Based on what? How long is this? Four, four minutes? I think we'll pause here. We'll pick we'll pick back up here. Pick back up here tomorrow.
Um, move that up. I'll just leave that, I guess. Um, get that Devin guy. He took my wallet. <laughs> What's up, Craig? How's it going, man? So, I hope that you guys enjoyed the stream. I'm going to go hit that gym. And uh, it's a leg day, so the worst day of all the days. Nah. So, if you liked it and you wanted to follow along or you want to support the channel, check out the link in the description. I would appreciate that. Um, I guess that's it. So, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, I might make another video later today. Maybe. But you guys have a great day. I'm going to go hit that gym. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Let me do some shout-outs real quick, and then I'll, then I'll head out. Devin, Sapines, Patrick, Craig, Stickman, doing well, Yens. Uh, Mika boy, <laughs> Nick, Kid Brave, who else we got here? If you're lurking, I appreciate you lurking. Just hit that like button before you head out. I appreciate that. And uh, let's see, we got Thomas, on Omnipotent. Oh yeah, best of luck. Uh, he's probably not here, but uh, Galeron, got your first job as a dev. I missed that, man. Congratulations, by the way. Zach, new one, Mangesh. Uh, Jamie, A Star, William, Roberto, Jude, Steve. All right. I'm out, guys. Have a good one.